Um, when we read the Bible, God tells us that um, all his people, all God's elect, are known to him. He knows every one of those whom he has elected from the foundation of the world to be saved. Every single one of them. Does it make a difference when they were born? What decade, what century, or uh, whatever. Even those who were saved before May 21, God knows all his elect. And he calls them, he calls his people uh, different things in the Bible, different names in the Bible. For instance, if you would turn over to Revelation, I believe it's 21, there God calls us his bride. We're going to look at some of the names that he calls his people. He calls his people by different names. Here in Revelation 21, verse 1, there we read, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, with all God's elect, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. God's people were known as the bride of Christ. A bride. It's one of the names that he calls his his people. We are the bride of Christ. And and there are other verses in the Bible that we could look at to prove that this is so. But we can't look at all the verses. It's one here and one there. Here God calls us the bride of Christ and Christ. And in other parts of the Bible you turn over to Romans eight. Romans eight. There he calls us his elect. And you know, the word elect is the word chosen. We are his chosen ones. Remember, he tells us we were chosen in him from the foundation of the world. In Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28, pick up the context. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And the only way we're going to love God is when God saves us, when we love him. To them who are the called, and another name we, God calls us, we are the called of Him. We're called according to His purpose. Remember, speaking about that, we're saved to the praise and glory of God. He called us for His purpose. He saves us for His purposes, not ours. In verse 29, for, for whom He did foreknew, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. More whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and them, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And God goes in verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge to the charge of God's elect. It is God that justifies. He calls us his elect. Remember he calls us his bride and now he's calling us his elect. And look at um, Colossians turn over to Colossians chapter three verse twelve verse verses twelve to fifteen. There is Colossians three verses twelve to fifteen. Put on, therefore, as elect of God, where he's elect. The elect of God, holy and be beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do we. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you're called in one body, and be thankful. See the same word there, God, in verse 12, we are his elect. So what's it? When he calls his people. And you will look at, turn, turn over to Titus. 
in Titus chapter 1. In Titus chapter 1, we're going to read verse 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. See the word elect? You see it throughout the New Testament, that we are God's elect. He calls us. Let's look at a, another, another scripture. Look at John chapter 15. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 12. John chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. He calls us his friends, God's people. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I have commanded you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth uh, not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things which I have heard of my Father have I made known unto you. Ye are... Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So here he calls us his friends. We are friends of his. And you see how beautiful that, that is. And um, Let's read on a little bit further. In verse 18. If the world hate you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. We are his chosen ones. We are his elect. You see. Uh, look at um, Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. There we read, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. And, you know, we're God's beloved, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereon he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. See there, we, we, we were chosen of God to salvation. You know, many people been, it's been taught throughout the world that the churches that we, that teaching of free will is not found in the Bible. God has from the beginning chosen us to salvation. To believe. God gives gives us the faith to believe. It's not our will. We can't do that. Uh, and in, there's a, another verse there in Ephesians 1. God tells us we were chosen in Him. He elected us to salvation. And, and, and so forth. And these are the places in the Bible. God calls us that we're sons of His. We're sons of God. And when you, 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 you think about that, you say, how could that be? That God will call us his son. Not in the way Christ is. But here he calls us sons. And how he tells us that we're going to reign. We're, we're kings. We're going to reign with him throughout all eternity. You know it boggles the mind that God would do that for any one of us. But it is true. It is true. Let's look at another verse in Psalm 147. Let's turn over to Psalm 147 verses 1 to 6 Psalm 147 verses 1 to 6 we start reading in verse 1 in verse 1 God says 
Praise ye Jehovah, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. Jehovah doth build up Jerusalem. You know, that's the Jerusalem of God. He gathereth together the outcast of Israel. And who does the gathering of his people? God does. He does the gathering. He healeth the broken in heart. Didn't he? That's us before we say God gives us a broken and a contrite heart. You see, and spiritually he heals us. And bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. Is he speaking about the stars out there in space? No. It is his people. He calls them stars. He calleth them by their names. Individually. Does, does God save? It uh, doesn't mean because mom and dad is saved. It doesn't mean that the children are. He saves us individually. Children are just rebellious against God as anyone else. So the children shouldn't think because mom and daddy saved that doesn't it doesn't make make you saved. You know, he saves us individually. We see in the Bible that men who truly love the Lord, who had children, that weren't saved. That weren't saved at all. So we have to be careful with that. And we can't parents can't assume because our children been hearing the word of God all their life doesn't mean that they're saved. They do grow up, and you will see whether they're saved or not. Um, so the stars here is God is speaking about his people. He tells them all by their names. All of God's elect are known to him, every single one of them. If you hold your hand here and go over into the book of Daniel. Remember that book, um, Daniel, he is called the true believer stars in Daniel chapter 12. Uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, God says, And they that, that be wise spiritually, when we are, spiritual eyes are open, we are wise spiritually. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Here speaking about the true believers. We are known as stars in the Bible. And back over in Psalm 147, verse 4. Psalm 147, verse 4. Let's read that again. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Verse 5. Great is our Lord, and, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Jehovah lifted up the meek. The meek, you know, those who blessed are in the meek and the Beatitudes. He casts the wicked down to the ground. And Psalm goes on. And there we see that God calls his people stars. And look at, go back over to the Gospel of John chapter 10. And, uh, John chapter 10. Verses 1 to 3. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And you know, a thief and a robber, there are those who are bringing a false gospel. You know, they're trying to get into heaven by another way. Christ is the door. And that will never work. They're stealing the word of God. And, and, and so forth. And verse 2, But he that entereth by the door into the shepherd of the sheep, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep, we are known as sheep, hear his voice. So we are known as sheep also. The true believers will hear, because God has given them ears to hear, they will hear the voice of God spiritually. Many people hear the gospel, but they are not saved. They are spiritually dead. So God gives his sheep, your known sheep. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name. See how that ties with Psalm 147? He calls them by name and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And verse 5 says, And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee. 
from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. See, when you spiritual eyes are open, you become very sensitive to truth. From the moment you hear it, somebody's bring bringing another gospel. You'll get you know you know that's not true. And God's people, who has their spiritual ears open, will not listen to that. They will leave. They will get away from it because they know that it's not true. It's not true to the Word of God. Uh, let's look at First John, and these are just a few verses in First John. Here in First John, God calls His His people. In other, in other words, you see, you see this through 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 John. He calls us little children. We are His little children. It doesn't make a difference how old you are. <laughs> we're 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 little children. Uh, in First John chapter two. First uh, John chapter two verse one, he says, "My little children, children, my little children." Isn't that he's he's just, as a as a father would say, "My little my, my my son, my little son, or my little child." And here God is calling us, "My little children." These things write I unto you. He's writing to his elect, his people, that ye sin not. But if any man sin. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. In verse 12, verse 12, the same chapter, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you. And whose sins are forgiven? God's people. God's elect. They're the only ones who has your sins forgiven. If you're not a child of God, your sin remains. Uh, in, in verse 28 of the same chapter, verse 19 to 18. Yes, yes. And it's in verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. In verse 28. 28, and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear, which we believe is uh, a few more weeks, shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. You see, here he's speaking to his little children. First uh, John 14. First John four. First uh, John four verse four. Here we read First John four verse four. Ye are of God. See we who God's people are 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 off. We are of God. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. See, God's people are of Him. You see, uh, and we are His little children. And God used many, 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 many other verses in the Bible to call His people names. And how wonderful it is that God would, would do that for us. And we'll see how He calls us His bride. We are the bride of Christ. We are His sons and daughters. We're His elect. And this God just goes to call His people to all these beautiful and wonderful names. He, he, he tells us that we are His. We are His elect. We are, he called us and we are the call of Christ and so forth. And God just goes on to tell us this. And there's many, many, many other verses that I have here I could look at. But I just want to share these few verses with us to see that you know, and we could trust the fact that God has not abandoned us. God has not abandoned His people. He, 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 he holds us. He keeps us. And in the meantime, we continue to wait for the Lord, wait upon Him, and to study the Bible, and to look at these end times verses. Many people are so discouraged, stop looking at scriptures pointing to the end of the world. That's wrong. We should continue to search the Bible regarding these matters, whatever matter it is. Can we learn something about the end? Where are we? We should continue to do that. We should never stop searching the scriptures. Searching the scripture. When we're taught these things, we check it out in the Bible to see whether these things are so. 
and we continue to wait upon the Lord until He comes, which is not too long from now. Okay, let's stop here and let's let's close. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for Thy Word. Oh Lord, what would we do without Thy Word? What would we know? We wouldn't know anything. We know, O oh Lord, that Thy Word is truth. The Word of God came from the very mouth of Almighty God. O oh Lord, we pray that You will have us to wait upon Thee, to continue to study the Bible. And O oh Lord, You will lead us into truth. You will bring us home with You uh, when You are ready. And O oh Lord, we pray that You will continue to open our eyes to truth and to study faithfully Thy Word. We pray for Family Radio, Mr. Camping, and for all thine elect who are waiting patiently upon thee, O Lord, because I believe shortly all thy people will be with you and this world will be forgotten. It will never come into mind anymore. And O Lord, we look forward to that day. O Lord, we pray for Chris as he bring forth thy word. And O Lord, we pray that you will correct us from thy word. And O Lord, all our eyes wait upon thee for all things. O Lord, we thank you for thy mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.